Oh, man. What's behind me? Get the cars out the way. And the coach. Yeah, man. I had uh, my brother was all in my 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 way, making me late, y'all. Really? Yeah, and I had to do some research on this dude, Jim Jones. You know, a little condescending. Pass me the hookah, hookah. Yeah, man, let me hit that hookah. I can't say nothing yet. I ain't probably ain't going to say the right thing if I start talking right now. Really? Yeah, I'm going to say something to get the video because Dr. Boyce, you know, he's telling people how to get my YouTube taken down. But Dr. Boyce, you ain't say nothing about them Asians yet. And I think we know why. Them Asians that have been saying the N-word to Charleston White. You ain't make no video how to take their page down yet, Doc. Now, they saying a lot of N-words, and theirs is really hate speech. But I think we we kind of know why now you won't say nothing to no Asian. Because you got an Asian zaddy. Yeah. What's his name? Charles Wu? Your, your Asian zaddy? Let me shut up. Hold on. Let me shut up. Let me shut up. You, you done drove me back to smoke, boy. I was doing good. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how am I Jim Jones? I thought it was Jim Jones, the rapper. Really? He talking about Jim Jones? Never mind. Hold on, boy. Just... <laughs> we got to add that other coal. Hold on. Let me add that other coal. It'll be after two minutes. But, oh, don't take that, boy. That, that thing going to burn you to smithereens. I know you look like a creature, but you can't really just be touching stuff like that. Uh, yeah, wrong with you. Your real daddy must have been ugly as a motherfucker. <laughs> that was your real daddy. Your real daddy ugly as hell. Oh, is it after two minutes? Oh, yeah, I can cuss now. Your real daddy ugly as a motherfucker. What? Yeah, you drove away up here for somebody. They say a bus. <laughs> you went for the oh, the alarm went on for two. All right. Check this out. Let me pass this hooper back. Be parching my uh <clears throat> hold on, hold on, let me get me a little sippy sip. Cause uh Dr. Boy say all oh, y'all stupid. <laughs> Dr. Boy, we think you stupid. <laughs> I hear you talking to people like that. You a doctor. You ain't that smart, doc. I'll tell you right now, you've been hiding in groups for a long. What I told you they do, they hide in groups. You little condescending bitch, but we're gonna get to you in a minute. Hold on, let me sip this. Mm, 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 mm. So before we get to Dr. Boyce, what I first have to talk about is I want to address uh, that glow stick Chris Bouchard and that ugly motherfucker Rob Parker. How dare y'all talk about Scottie Pippen like that? Don't you know Scottie Pippen took the same Bulls team to the finals, you punk? How in the hell two motherfuckers that look like that, a fake-ass kid reject, High yellow pimp, a uh, freckle faced punk, and a motherfucker that need to be spending his whole check rearranging his whole goddamn face, gonna sit there and laugh on TV talking about Scottie Pippen, a legend. You immature punk motherfucker think y'all slick. I know y'all feel hurt inside, and the only thing y'all holding on to is that little punk ass job. So all y'all could do is pick on black men, but bitch, uh, Scottie Pippen is a Hall of Famer. And I'll believe what he say, but before I believe you two punks, especially you, Rob Parker, I told you to shut your goddamn mouth. The only thing we want to hear out of you bitches is when you give us a date to when your punk ass having plastic surgery. Until then, shut the fuck up, nigga. I told you when you go on a date, tape your motherfucking wallet to your mouth and show up on a date, don't say shit but hello, and then take close the tape back, bitch. That's how ugly you is, motherfucker. Don't be talking about no goddamn body. The more you two bitches talk, the more I'm going to fuck with y'all. Y'all don't have the right to talk about people like that. Do you hear any of the legends talking about Scotty like that? So who the hell give you two punks the right to talk like that? Huh? So shut y'all goddamn mouth. 
we're gonna look into you motherfuckers i need to get me a private investigator on my team i want to see what you niggas really look like and live like and uh, how, what, what, what's about you niggas y'all want to know who we sleep with who we be with we're gonna find out who the fuck y'all sleep with and put y'all shit out on tv and see how y'all like it y'all some goddamn punks every goddamn day y'all got something to say about a black man and in a way where you, it's funny it's snickering he in the hall of fame but you making jokes about him and you ain't shit neither one of you motherfuckers getting paid to run y'all mouth bunch of fucking gossip girl why you wasn't talking about stats and shit bitch ain't you a sports show we don't want to hear your opinion about nothing oh i'm gonna give my opinion about you two ugly motherfuckers Ren and Stimpy looking bitches. <laughs> yeah, I know why they like to pick on people so much. I know why they like to pick on. I'm going to pick on you bitches. I know why y'all like to pick on people so much. Because you know y'all was the butt of all goddamn jokes. I got paid while you was joking on me, motherfucker. So I could be quiet. And you, and nigga, you was getting joked on for real. I know you was getting joked on uh, Rob Parker ugly motherfucker you <laughs> on that nigga best day he looked like the back of somebody got them ankles or some shit bottom of so your ugly motherfucker shut your bitch ass up don't ever make jokes nigga tell stats and statistics nigga that's what we want to hear out of a sports show you bitches want to be a personality so i'm gonna be a personality to combat y'all personality how about that bitch <laughs> And the players, I think they're going to love me for that. <laughs> you punk motherfucker. And back to you, Dr. Boyce Ho. And let me explain something to you, because I think you breaking down my videos for the first two minutes because you're such a dumbass doctor that you will say something good and then disrespect somebody right after that. And then all of your fans, I'm not going to disrespect them, but I think because they've been trained to like you, because you hide up under Dr. Claude and you say other men name that they respect, that they're not really listening to the condescending shit that you say out your mouth, fat bitch. Because you a disrespectful little motherfucker. Even on your podcast, you disrespect the people that don't agree with you. You start off by trying to give me advice. Kwame needs to learn. They're just picking on your basketball game. You should just get over it. This and that. Soon somebody disagree with your bitch ass. Oh, you're not intelligent. You just don't get it. You only want, I only want 10% anyway. It's a privilege to be over here. Like you all high and mighty. So any conversation that we enter into with a bitch like you, you always win. Because you always set the parameters of what the conversation is about. You either get it or you don't because you're dumb. You a stupid motherfucker. You know that? Now, I want to know how am I compared to a white pastor that went around church houses and took advantage of mostly black women from the videos I was looking at. Every person in the front row was a black woman screaming and shouting at a white man. You compare me, a man who came to YouTube saying that you can get your own independence learning three trades, came here and let people use my videos to, you know, spread around a little economic, spread around a little income, you know, the shit that you don't know how to make or spread to people without them paying into you. You want people with no money to pay you to teach them how to get money. And you never really do it, really, in my opinion. Because the numbers of black folks in the wage gap hasn't really decreased from no motherfuckers listening to you. But everybody will be on your page listening to you. You dry a race board talking motherfucker you. Who the fuck can sit here and listen to a condescending bitch talk himself in circles the way he debunk his own goddamn argument <laughs> why he talking? You know what? I didn't, I don't even know that Kwame Brown fella. <laughs> you know, I just thought, you know, he was a basketball player, but now, you know, I I just had to see why they was going on there. You know what? He remind me of a demagogue. He remind me of goddamn Jim Jones, a, a, a goddamn alleged murderous uh, guy who just took advantage of women through the church, might I add. Do this look like a church, you stupid son bitch? Do this look like I'm asking anybody for a handout? I'm giving more out than I'm getting, you stupid son bitch. How can you make a comparison like that, boy? And then go on to say you ain't say nothing negative about me? Boy, there's something wrong with you, boy. And, and let me shout out to this YouTuber that uh, 
pointed it out. I hope I'm not butchering your name. He from Hong Kong. His name is uh, Mupak Kwam. M-U-P-A-K-W-A-M. He in Hong Kong. That's his YouTube channel. M-U-P-A-K-W-A-M in Hong Kong. You know. And Carcino. I think both of them played it and I saw it. And I'm like, last night, I'm like, no, I ain't getting back on tonight. I'm tired in the motherfucker. But you compared me to like a cult, murderous, psychopathic cult leader that took advantage through the church. So are you saying churches are bad, Dr. Boyce? Because we got a lot of black churches in our community, Doc. And a lot of these pastors sound like this. <laughs> a lot of these pastors give out hope like you do, you little bitch. Because I heard your little Asian zaddies, how he spoke about you. <laughs> Your little Asian zaddy had a leash around your neck, bitch ass boy. Yeah, your Asian zaddy. Look how he talked about you, boy. He said you were just a character, a little puppet. Like I told you you were, bitch. I knew you was a puppet. That third eye told me before I even knew you. I said something over there told me to stay the fuck away from you. Didn't I say that, boy? And when you had people call me, I even told old people. I said, okay, I'll leave him alone. But I don't want to talk to him. Maybe you can do it. No, no, me and his kind. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, you teaching young black boys to marry single mothers. See, you a pandering bitch because just by the numbers and real women don't respect you. They can tell you're pandering to them because guess what? My mama told me my mama's cooking told me when a woman with three or four kids tried to get me right out of high school. My mama said, hell no, boy, you going somewhere. What the fuck is wrong with you? You know how many responsibilities that is? You got to take care of her, her kid. You got to argue with the baby daddy. You don't need that shit. So women will tell their sons that. So you don't think women can understand why a young man that's going places wouldn't want to do that, single with no kids? You think that's bashing women, you stupid son of a bitch? So only women can make logical decisions like that. And only mothers can say that. But if a man say, no, I'm worth something, I'm going somewhere, I would rather start my own lineage because you don't got your own, ain't it? So because you did it, now everybody else supposed to do it. You're going to make it a thing. You punk bitch, that's dumb. If you decide to fall in love with a woman who has children and she floats your boat, motherfucker, fall in love. That's an individual thing. But by and large, you jackass, you a doctor. You supposed to go off the numbers, you pandering punk bitch. And that's why nobody don't like to listen to nobody like you. Because that is the dumbest advice I ever heard. You's a jackass. I'm a man with children. And every woman I've dated, they had to run into my baby mamas. And everything they thought about not dating a man with kids, it came to reality. So I don't blame them, you punk bitch. It is hard to deal with. So why would you be encouraging that? Are you pandering, bitch? Yes, you are. Because the only thing you're going to do is go with what the, what the flow is, bitch. You thought that was going to get women to respect you. And yeah, because I'm a single mama. No, they, know, they want the truth, motherfucker. Because while you pandering to them, men still hitting them and running the fuck away from them. So maybe if you want to help them, you might want to tell them the goddamn truth. Don't have Pookie, baby, and then go try to marry goddamn uh, uh, Stanford. Maybe go have Stanford, baby, and then Stanford will take care of you. But you can still have sex with Pookie if that's what you want to do. But just make sure it don't result in a baby. Pookie don't want your baby. Pookie already ain't a good daddy. Pookie already chilling with his homeboy. Pookie already showed you what he doing. So if you decide to go sleep with Pookie, that's a consequence to that. Boys, since you don't want to tell women the truth ever, pandering bear. You a doctor, but you so dumb. You don't know that I was sitting here using drama to get people in so I can bring them in here and tell them something good that they need to hear that you you qualify. You good enough. This ain't no coat, bitch. I tell people they can do it and I'm showing them by my actions. Showing them, give a little love out. Be a little more free. Don't, don't try to cloak off information. This story is bigger than what people think. Their whole minds and brains are being controlled. Narratives are being swung. You see, didn't they like you, punk bitch, before they start listening to you, dumb ass? <laughs> see, it's time out to, to, to get people uh, from being in their feelings. 
it's time to get people to be in their consciousness in the and, and move with a purpose. You're not moving with no purpose because you join in some group talking a bunch of shit and nothing get fixed. Dr. Boyce, you attack me. The biggest thing to help the black community right now is to get Kwame Brown to stop saying the N word on YouTube. So much so that you took time out of your marriage. The same weekend you getting married, I allege that there's something called a go along, get along gang, right? I argue with two dudes, which turned into Charlemagne the God, which turned into Stephen A putting me on ESPN, trying to defame me, which turned into my whole family being doxxed and discredited, which turned into almost every YouTuber that is going to hurt their pockets because I'm countering the bullshit that they saying. I'm not standing on anyone's shoulders. Shout out to the young man who says daddy's cooking on his show because it's a personal thing. This is about a connection to something. And if it took your daddy to do that, then damn it. Shout out to your daddy. Shout out to you. You got to be connected to something. That young man don't sound like he out trying to shoot nobody in the street. Sound like he will defend himself and whoop your ass, though. Just a man. So if daddy cooking gave you that, and it's not about a daddy or a mama, I want it to be daddy and mama cooking because you need both. But I'm waking people up with that terminology. Dr. Boyce, you so dumb, you couldn't even understand. What is mama cooking? You equated it to a 12-year-old. You even made it sound goofy and dumb. No, but what's goofy and dumb is that you've been doing something for 25 years and you ain't move up into the number one bracket of it yet. Now, that's goofy and dumb. You've been doing something for 25 years and you ain't in the top 20. You ain't in the top 25. Now, that's pretty waste of time. Dumb. That's why your wife was trying to get your ass off that phone. She might be a geeky. You know, you leave that boy. We ain't got time for this shit. Come on, boy. Get the groceries. <laughs> Fuck wrong with you, nigga. You thought that weak ass education was going to trump a geeky? See, let me explain something to you, boys. You keep calling yourself an elder. Who the fuck told you you was an elder? I said, I want to connect to the elders. I never said you was an elder. Elder, Elders don't move like that. Elders are not condescending cocky bitches like you. Elders understand that every man is important and is collective. You're going to need these numbers. You want only 10% of condescending motherfuckers that talk and act like you. Can y'all rebuild America? Can y'all fix the roadways? Can y'all control the power grid? Can y'all do anything other than run your fucking mouth? Now, I'm sure it's some of y'all that are very good with finances and taxes and all this stuff. And we need that. But you don't got to stand on somebody else's shoulders because they don't talk and walk and act like you, bitch. And that's your fucking problem. And that's a lot of you bourgeoisie motherfuckers problem. You're going to need guys like me. Regular common people. You can say whatever about me, bitch. You can tell me I'm whatever because I play the game. It's just a game, motherfucker. I'm not no celebrity. I just wanted to play a goddamn game at its highest level. You never asked me what I thought about it. It was just a fucking game that I used as a stepping stone to put my mother on a golf course. I've seen too much real life for you to get me caught up into some dumb shit and wordplay. You just talking, boys, and I told you that. I'm something different. You never figured out how to feed, feed all your 200 and something thousand subscribers, boys. Why don't you let them use your videos? Ain't you the economics guy? You didn't know that would put money in their pocket, dummy? Let me hit that hookah real quick. Hey, I need an intermission of roasting your bitch ass because you so easy. I told you, you look like the motherfucker, a nigga, a trip and hit his head against the locker in high school and you around here talking shit and cussing now. Bitch, shut up. I bet your wife don't even like your bitch ass. You probably set her up to marry you. Somebody told me how you proposed to her with a fanny pack on. You know that was the lamest shit ever. He proposed to his wife with a fanny pack on. Yeah, looking like a fat baby. <laughs> Stupid little looking bitch. She wanted to say no, but you put her on camera. She's going to divorce your ass in two years and take your economics. You know he lame as hell in the band camp, motherfucker. There ain't nothing wrong with the band. But it's wrong with boys being in the band. 
He did do that shit. I saw the picture of his fat ass. He, he wear white socks with like gray New Balance. Holy stomach shit. hanging all over. Bitch, you need to work out for your goddamn wedding, though. But you done got married already. Teddy bear looking motherfucker. Now he want to curse and shit. You ain't no fool about it, man. You want to study all day. And that's what's wrong with us now. We got weak, soft bitches like you trying to fake intellect a man. Men don't care about that. We'll slap you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck wrong with you? Trying to come up and act like a, a better version of a woman. Trying to out intellect a man all day. And all you're doing is controlling the narrative, setting a, setting your shit up, getting your shit. Well, let me tell you about such and such. He's a this, he's a that. I mean, if you don't believe what I'm saying, then you're dumb. Enough said. I'm a doctor. He's an idiot. Motherfucker, you couldn't even come to YouTube and do what a busty bus with a high school education did. And you the economics major? Nigga, fuck you. See, you can't make no money. You don't know how to make no money. See, that's why you got to sit up under a dude like Charles uh, Wong or whatever his name is. And then he got to give you money to be a boy. Give you money for a product you don't even believe in. You selling hope to women. That's why you always pandering to one. Now women think that if they go out and have three, four kids, make a bitch ass nigga like you wait for 20, 30 years and go out and live their life and come back and they gonna have a nigga like you waiting on them. No, everybody ain't like you, punk. Fuck you talking about. Nigga, man, men, you ain't a man amongst men. Don't know men I hang around and look at your life and say, yeah, that's what I aspire to be. Telling young boys to do that, you a dumb motherfucker. Would you tell young girls to do that? Would you tell young girls to go out and be with a man with multiple kids. You, so that's what you want to do. You're going to tell your daughters in that house, go find a man with multiple baby mamas. That's going to be the best future for you. That's what you're telling little girl. See, the only time a little soft, mush bread, bitch ass nigga like you will understand the bad behavior in that is when you put a woman in the place of the shit that you're talking about. Then you can see how it's a bad thing because you a coward, punk bitch. See, I can call out the fact that your lesser charge homeboy is dead ass wrong for throwing bunkies and shit at Donnell Rawlins because if he would have did that to a female, that would have been sexual assault. See, but you a pandering punk. You want men to be disrespected on every level because they're your friend. He treated you nice. Probably threw a bunkie at you too. <laughs> he probably threw one back. <laughs> <laughs> fuck wrong with you nigga trying to use your education I knew what they were trying to do I knew the setup I was like who next and so I told this nigga I dealt with condescending niggas like that in school all my life they'll disrespect you like shit and try to control the room by making you get upset so I gave him the upset fuck you bitch I wanted to disrespect him on every level because I knew I was going to use his own words to eat him when you fake smart like that You'll talk yourself in circles with your own words or eat you up and make you implode. So I still gave him the ratchet. Nigga, fuck you. Because that's what people, that's what we say to your little soft niggas like you in real life. Fuck you. Use a pop. And so I've dealt with guys like that all my life. He come and try to be the calm guy, get you to curse and shout. Most people don't know how to see past the curse words and do a person have a right to go get like that. They'll just, oh, he cursing. Oh, my God. They done made the world so sensitive. Oh, God, he's a big, bad man cursing. So then he'll get away with the worst behavior in the world. You know, like tricking black people for that Asian boy. Then he don't even like you. He don't even like you. I bet your wife don't even like your bitch ass. You tricked that woman into marrying her. I'm going to put her on camera. That's supposed to be an intimate moment, you little bitch. It's an intimate moment you put on camera looking like you look. You didn't even have a tuxedo on. You wasn't even sharp. You an economics major looking like that. I guess your deal with Charles Wu had done run out. <laughs> and now you're disrespecting all your subscribers. You're stupid. I think all y'all should unsubscribe because I'm willing to stand on a hill right now and die to show that y'all stupid and I'm tired of this shit. And hey, you thought they were going to stay there? <laughs> you a dummy trying to make it like it's a revolutionary thing. No, bitch. You ran your mouth about somebody that said it was a go along, get along game. And you're proving the point so much that you really are calling people stupid and then expecting them not to really start paying attention. See what happened when you call somebody dumb, niggas are going to look at like, who the fuck you think you're talking to? Now 
they're paying attention to what you're saying. They don't give a fuck that you keep name dropping Claude Anderson and all these other men that done done something they like. They paying attention to what you're saying now, bitch. And everything you saying is some bullshit. Everything out your mouth. You're telling people he ain't trying to bring nobody together while I'm bringing in great men, letting men tell their stories. I want to get Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on here, too, because I believe the go along, get along gang railroaded him, too. So, Dr. Moyes, I ain't never heard you interview Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I ain't never seen you interview Mahmoud. I ain't never heard of you going to find Devin George that's building whole communities around the world. And you the economics major. You supposed to be finding men like that. See, you probably couldn't get no money out of him because he already got the system in place. So you don't want to come up there and help with that with your knowledge. See, I noticed, Doc, you don't never give knowledge unless it come with you making some money. So you tried to throw that bullshit on me. You more like Jim Jones than anybody else. I'm not selling a bunch of women, women of fake lies and hope. I'm telling them the truth. I'm telling everybody the truth. You a lying punk ass bitch. And that's the truth. People can see videos of your condescending ass bringing up my name. Oh, I, I, everybody just keep asking me about him on Twitter. Who the fuck are you that everybody keep calling you and asking you? See, you know you can tell a lying some bitch when they overexert themselves and everything, making themselves seem important. Stephen Jackson just called me, you know, and such and such called me. You like a gatekeeping bitch, like I said. Why are you getting so many calls about everything? Ain't nobody calling you about economics. Everybody calling you about drama. And talking about a busty bus. You got more calls about a busty bus basketball player and with some drama connected to one man, might I add you. You connected to Charlemagne the guy, which I don't know why he used that name because Judge Joe Brown told us what that name meant. But I noticed something about you go along, get along game, motherfucker. Because see, I thought you was talking about the rapper Jim Jones. But now that you said this guy's name, Jim Jones, and I actually looked up this uh, horrible person that you compared me to without even knowing me, Doc, you're on video saying you don't know me and then making comparisons to a murderous cult leader, allegedly. You condescending bitch. But I, and that ain't even allegedly, but I got to ask you something, uh, Jim Jones, because I'm starting to notice these people in these little industries, you guys take names of people that are horrible people. So I got to ask a series of questions. Charlemagne the God, why is your name Charlemagne the God? That is a horrible man's name. Uh, why are you still on the breakfast club? You a horrible man. DJ Envy. Bitch, why is you out of that leash? I see you, motherfucker. Put that leash back on your motherfucking neck. I know it's Sunday, and I, she probably at the grocery store getting some shit, and you walking around free in the yard. Bitch, put that leash back on your motherfucking neck, ho. I don't know. So why is Jim Jones named Jim Jones? See, I'm starting to think this simulation that I think we in is absolutely true. And they give you these weird old people and they make them exalted on these uh, platforms like they bigger than life. And they put a bunch of niggas around them that do a bunch of nigga shit. And Dr. Boyce, he got a bunch of bourgeois Z around them that like to stand on everybody's shoulders that's coming with that reel. So you can make sure you suppress their talking points. Because everything that all of y'all go along, get along, gang, all y'all keep talking about is when I'm doing the comic relief part. None of you mentioned coding. None of you mentioned trade schools. None of you mentioned fourth grade reading levels. None of you mentioned the fact that I came onto YouTube and I'd help more in the economics department than Dr. Boyce for the free. And you ain't have to put no dollar down to get my book. You didn't have to come to a seminar. You just had to come listen and be you. Take the video. Make it your own perspective. Tell me if you think it's a go along, get along game. Start asking these real questions. Why didn't nobody ask Chris Bouchard want to laugh at Scottie Pippen? How come they ain't asked Michael Jordan? Did he really want to trade me for Elton Brand? Nobody asked that question yet. I'm just still the an angry guy. Nobody asked Stephen A. Hold his foot to the fire and say, hey, look, 
we don't want to see no more basketball clips. Why was you at them colleges, boy? Why was you at them high schools, boy? And then chase the money from Disney and iHeart and all these corporations and see who pay these men. Then you'll start seeing the truth of why so many people are talking about Kwame all of a sudden. See, they didn't just hear the jokes. They heard and saw what I was doing. That's why so much sound going out. That's why as niggas want to call my mama the B word. That's why as niggas up there on YouTube telling the whole their whole audience that the people that are following me is bouncing on my lower parts. They can't just see the realness and agree with something. And little boy, you got a feminine ass tongue, boy. You little boy, you the little YouTube boy that said that. I think you from California. You got a feminine ass tongue, boy. And I don't know who raising you, but where I'm from, that's very dangerous to talk like that, boy. I don't know what done happened to you little boys. I guess you raised up around your mamas and you done heard your mama going off and stripping and talking like the baddest motherfucker in the world. But you a man, sir. And there's certain things you ain't supposed to say out your mouth, sir. Now, you little feminine males need to watch y'all motherfucking mouth. Y'all going too far with the disrespect for attention. Because other people see you. You don't get no man attention like that. And that's how women get a man attention. Sometimes we like women to talk like that. We get them back in other ways. <laughs> But you need to watch your mouth, boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You niggas were raised wrong. You niggas always want to stand on niggas' shoulders. You niggas are effeminate. Some of you niggas. And it ain't about the best fighter. There's some of you niggas can fight real good. But you just ain't fighting for nothing. You think that's masculine to go out and whip a nigga ass. I'm not on YouTube saying, oh, I'm just the baddest motherfucker. I don't want this reputation. And, oh, I just body people. No, they are bodying themselves. I said it was a go along, get along game. And all of them keep going along, getting along this direction because they don't know how to have a conversation. And white people can't say shit about black people in America right now. So they use black people like Stephen A., Charlemagne, Boyce Watkins, and all the people that's talking about me. Mentioning me in interviews when you never mentioned me in interviews before and then and then you start giving your opinion after never talking to me, regardless of whether I turned down an interview with you or not. That still doesn't make you know me and it should not make us sworn enemies just because I didn't come talk to you. So you guys are exposing this go along, get along game. I'm wondering who these white folks going to send next because they normally send women by now. But I guess they tried to dock the Boyce Watkins experiment because Boyce Watkins is one of those quiet, educated guys, but he cursing now, so he sounds stupid. <laughs> and men can't identify with no man that make decisions like you, boy. Shut up. You ain't going to be able to hide up under Dr. Boyce Watkins forever. Fuck you talking about, nigga. We hear you. Don't blame this shit on Dr. Boyce. Stop. I mean, uh, you ain't going to be able to hide up under Dr. Claude Anderson forever. We talking about you, Boyce. Quit mentioning other men's name. Now, if I got somebody over me, why won't you explain this Asian zaddy you got? Or did y'all break up? Because, boy, when I watched that video, you was upset. Let's grab me then. I'm just old cool ass nigga. <laughs> and didn't you say the N-word when you was mad? I think he said the N-word when he was mad. You said you was a cool ass N-word, didn't you? I think I heard you use the N-word. I might need to tell him how to take your page down. Oh, you can't just use it in the title. Oh, because you dang sure use the N-word, Doc. I'm almost certain. Piece of shit, you. Gatekeeping bitches. All this over a lesser charge punk. All you talking about me over this nigga. But it ain't no go along, get along game. What happened to Chris Jackson? That wasn't no go along, get along game. That's just supposed to happen to everybody that's standing there and praying and minding their own business. Remember, in America, we're supposed to have life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. But a man was minding his own business praying, and he couldn't do what he loved to do in America because he was pursuing his happiness. But it ain't no go-along, get-along gang, though. You never ask about that, Doc, you punk bitch, weak soul. You want to tell me how I curse. Maybe, you know what, Doc? You're right. You know what I'm going to do, Doc? 
since the world's so brainwashed, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get uh one of them beats. I'm gonna buy that beat from that dude Self Talk. Shout out to Self Talk. I'm gonna get that beat. Get a little bit of Mama's cooking. Get a, and I'm gonna play it low in the background. So when I'm cursing and saying the N word and I'm saying fuck you, it's to a beat. Cause we love music as long as we cursing in songs. Cause that's what the white man wanna hear. That's what it, that, that's what they capitalize off of. So I'll put a beat to it so I can say everything I'm saying so we don't have to worry about that no more. Cause I ain't hear you out here crucifying radio stations and rappers. You say all of them call you, but you just don't want to be their friend. Lying bitch, you probably begging for money from all of them. <laughs> Fuck you talking about. You don't, so you make that much money to die. You don't need nobody. You don't need your subscribers cause they stupid. You don't need, you don't need nothing. You, you make that much money that you just such a bad motherfucker. You don't need your subscriber. Nobody, huh? You damn sure need that Asian zaddy. Then talking about you wasn't a part of it. Your face all over the goddamn shit. Who would let somebody use their likeness and all that? And you on the front cover of the shit. You either a dumbass doc or you know exactly what you're doing. You paid puppet. Do you even believe in the product, doc? You just like that motherfucker, Jim Jones, selling folks hope, selling women hope. Notice that. There's a lot of women in the videos. I watched this fella, Jim Jones, and Jim Jones is white, punk. And Jim Jones was in a church, punk. Yeah. You got a little disdain with white men because that's your connection. You stay away from white men so you can fake like you're pro-black. But them Asians can drag your ass all over the place, you little bitch. Yeah. Told that nigga he was more like a little character. And when he cried on TV, we got a little extra money. Sitting out here crying. They'll get a little weasel like you to cry. I wish that boy would have asked me to get on there and cry. I looked at his ass. That's why me and you will never get along, boys. Because if I would have met the Jim Jones, the real Jim Jones, you see it wasn't no bunch of men in there, you dumb bitch. So I wouldn't have been in there. I wouldn't have been nowhere around no motherfucking Jim or Jones. We could see through that shit, nigga. Just like I saw through your bitch ass. Fuck you talking about. They don't, the, the church don't influence a, a whole race of men. They influence a whole race of women. Church is in the inside, baby. I know God. I speak to God whenever I feel like it. Fuck you talking about. You a trip, doc. You ain't nothing like me. You ain't nothing that your wife like. Fuck you talking about, nigga. You trying to make yourself seem relevant and important by inserting yourself in every goddamn body business and then throwing around a bunch of men names. Go along, get along, gang. I know Willie D. I know this person. Yeah, you know, because the ghetto boys, and I know such and such, and I know the goddamn Dr. Puffs, and I know Charlemagne, and I go out here to L.A., and I go out here. Nigga, I be by my motherfucking self. Stand by yourself, Doc. Punk. Cause So we can hear you. We hear you now, though. None of them people going to be able to say the shit you said. Since we so motherfucking stupid. I hope your septic tank break and the motherfucker you come over there, he remember your face. Hold on, bitch. Ain't you say you only want 10%? I ain't fixing your shit and leave. <laughs> <laughs> you so smart, figure out how to fix it, fucker. I hope you're a Spanish guy or somebody like that. Go and fix your own shit. It ain't fuck you and walk off. <laughs> shit. Your motherfucker that cut your grass. Since you so smart, you cut this motherfucker and walk the fuck off. The electrician come over that bitch. Hey, man, you know everything else? Go to school, electrician school, bitch. Bye. Condescending motherfucker. That's how you talk to people. You a piece of goddamn work. You know that? You couldn't be. I bet you don't hang with men like that for real. Them niggas just hang around you for a photo op and connections to Charlemagne. Because Charlemagne, for a little black short-ass weasel, he got a connection to a lot of people and a lot of money. I wonder why they're giving him so much money. Since the average black man make forty two to $50,000 a year, but Charlemagne got access to a lot of money. Yeah, a sick son bitch that's smelling seats on air. He must know a lot of sick son bitches. No, they won't. Women, when y'all got so soft that y'all are watching a nigga give a playbook to sexual harassment right in the office? This man say things like, you can't rape the willing on camera. These are his words, by the way. That's for educational purposes, YouTube. 
Y'all can go back and look at the tape. He said, you can't R word the willing. This is don't make no sense, man. What we watching right in front of us, y'all uh, letting this shit happen right in front of us. They watching this man soften our kids up for what's to come. He softened them up on the radio. This is what this man is doing. They're passing bills in California and all over the place to where when six some bitches like uh, Charlemagne, the lesser charge, get a hold of your little young baby, that motherfucker ain't going to prison. And you going to look like the bad guy if you do something after that. Because he going to be sick. He going to be mentally ill. He just needs to go to a treatment center for six months and let him out. And then he needs to go to the school and read to your babies. And then after he reads your baby a book, he needs to go to the camps with your babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need mentors for these kids, not their daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to do anything possible to keep their biological father, probably the only man that don't want to sexually assault them, away from them. And let's put a bunch of strange men around them, call them mentors, men that we don't give background checks, men that they can talk real soft. Men that could have been abused them damn selves in the household. Put them around other people's children. And let's see if the abused become the abuser. And we wonder why we can't find our kids. We wonder why every other motherfucking 20 minutes, there's an Amber Alert going off on goddamn phones. I know where my son at every fucking day, every second of the day. Now, I might not know what he's doing because sometimes I don't want that little fucker on that game. And sometimes he's slick. he put them little headphones in and turn it down real quiet. he still play the game. But his ass is upstairs. He home. Because I'm like Batman. Every boy, if he touched that door, whoo, where the fuck you going at, boy? <laughs> where the fuck you think you going at, boy? Huh? You going with who? Nigga don't even think about it. Y'all don't want that, huh? You want the mentor. You want the stepdaddy. That ain't got no connection to this baby. So you don't know if the stepdaddy just want the mama. Just a fine ass mama. Stepdaddy might be jealous of the goddamn kids sometime. That ain't the first option, boys. We don't even know if them kids like you. I wouldn't want no nigga around my mom. Fuck you, nigga. That first thing I said, I've been looking at that nigga like, nigga, I don't even know you, nigga. Especially if she would have brought a nigga like Boyce up and it was soft, we would have beat your ass, boy. <laughs> boy, you would have lasted a day in our house. A bunch of big ass trees, we would have fucked you up, boy. Your ass would have left in a day. You wouldn't even made it in the afternoon. Soon as you'd have told me anything, I'd have said, bitch, you ain't my daddy. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you were giving me good advice. Bitch, you ain't my daddy. Fuck you. Yeah, I'd have told you that as a kid. Shut your goddamn mouth. Fuck you talking about nigga. You'd have brought them ugly ass teeth up in my goddamn mama. <laughs> <laughs> no, somebody said that the comment said, Hey, talk about them teeth. Don't have me laughing. Oh man. Oh Lord have mercy. Boys, why are you stepped into this shit, man? A soft ass nigga like you that been picked on your whole life. Look like you were wearing them thick sole black shoes in high school. <laughs> and them bitches them bitch were knock knees slumping in and shit. All the inside wore out like a motherfucker. It was brand new on the outside. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Doc. I do joke a lot, but I say a lot of good shit too. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, Becky with the good hair. Boy, I ain't heard from you. You in Atlanta still? Yeah, I ain't heard from you. <laughs> hey. That nigga sounded good on that goddamn interview. You know, I'm with the shits. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? If we got a box, we got to come do the show. Nah, bitch, I don't want a box. Yeah, you supposed to be in Atlanta, nigga. I text you too, boy. <laughs> I ain't heard nothing from you yet. Yeah. I, I put this shit in the ponytail for you. <laughs> hey, boy, you talk all that shit on that goddamn camera, boy. I DM'd you too, boy. Sure did. I knew you wasn't like that though. I could tell. I could tell how much you take care of your face, slick your hair up and shit. You don't want to run into no wild cat like me, boy. <laughs> hey, the way you slick your face up, 
It's and perm and have a nigga clip in your hair. I saw that shit. What the fuck is wrong with this nigga? This nigga had the spot date. This nigga, this nigga, this nigga have, that nigga don't get no haircut like us. Nigga, you ain't black, boy. That nigga don't get no haircut like us. That nigga get a haircut like my white home boy up the street. That nigga. <laughs> that motherfucker can layer in this shit. <laughs> nigga, that ain't how I get my haircut, motherfucker. We you clippers, bitch. <laughs> Fuck wrong with you. You would have bought that finger away you talking about you coming to Atlanta. You had red clay. They would have never been able to get all that red clay out your shit, boy. <laughs> hey, we got red clay down here, boy. You would have never got that red clay out. That slick ass goddamn perm. I can tell you that now. You would have had a new haircut. <laughs> and a new face. <laughs> you'd have been you'd have been missing from all the smoke podcast for a couple of weeks. Come around here fucking with me after saying what you said, bitch. Fuck you mean. <laughs> Did that nigga tape a show in Atlanta yet? He ain't tell me the date he was gonna be. He a real he a real slick fake weasel tough mother. Yeah, we'll be in Atlanta next month, nigga. Yeah, come up to the show. Uh we can buck. He ain't never say when. I don't text you a long time. I text you on the first, nigga. I want my money like the light bill. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna text you on the 15th, too, nigga. Oh, what, what the date is? I'm gonna text you again. I don't know what time you said you were gonna be here. Well, shit, I've been having nightmares about you, boy. I, I think that. Yeah, I, I text you by Tuesday, boy, see if you still here. But I don't know where you nigga learn to talk like that, but I think I can beat you into a brighter future. Fuck wrong with you, bitch. You don't talk to no man like that, nigga. And now all the women talking about, just let it go. We don't want all the violence. No, 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 no. The way you talk, boy, you need a lesson. I don't know what he talking about. They talking about he a tough guy because he been chasing people around basketball courts with 15 niggas there to break it up. <laughs> that ain't tough, nigga. Running around basketball court, running the locker rooms with security following you and shit. If you coming to meet me, there ain't gonna be no security following nobody. You gonna you, we gonna get into it. We gonna get each other a hug. <laughs> I, would not, I, I would have dreams about I would wake it up about out of my sleep, having dreams about holding that finger wave in that red clay. <laughs> what you said? What the fuck you said? <laughs> That's how everybody wanna do that nigga. What he said? That's some bullshit. What you said, boy. I ain't hear no apology about that yet. You supposed to apologize to all men in America for saying shit like that, boy. And then we might can let it go. You supposed to say, young boys, that is not something that you supposed to say. Because there have been people that then got to, went to prison and in the ground for words that I chose to use. You supposed to say shit like that on all the smoke podcast. So you could teach these young men that you made a mistake in saying something like that. Because when you say stuff like that. Little young boy snickering and kickering like that's something you're supposed to say to a man. And some men that ain't in the position that I'm in, they not going to take too kindly to snicker and kicker with your motherfucking ass. So I think you might want to clear that up on air to show these young men that your mouth was too effeminate and you shouldn't have said something like that. Maybe you got into your emotion, but you need to clear that up, sir. I'm not trying to bully you. I'm not trying to do none of that. But you said some whole ass shit on air, sir. And I don't know if your uh, radio station or your the, whoever you work for, boy, they are about promoting uh, sexual talk like that against men. But I ain't with that shit, boy. I ain't with that. <laughs> yeah, you in, you got to be in that go along, get along game. I ain't never heard men talk so sexual to other men. What the fuck wrong with you, nigga? It's crazy. They, they, these niggas build a whole image off pretending to be tough, and now you think you can talk to men like that. Yeah, you, boy, you like to get it. Hell no. You know, I'd be the bad guy since they say that I move in violence. If I, they post every picture where he at. If I move in violence and, and show up where he at, then I'd be the bad guy. I ain't gonna look for the whole nigga. You don't want to talk behind the scenes, it's over. But if I was you, I would apologize for all these young black males because I'm not gonna look to find you. I was just hoping you meant what you said about coming to Atlanta because I ain't no box. Mm -mm, I can't box. Mm -mm. This is my phone. <laughs> 
I get a hold of your ass. <laughs> I get a hold of your ass, boy. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. But listen here, man. Boys, I hope you don't talk about me no more. Rob Parker, go get a facelift. I'm telling you, we want to know the date. Stephen A. Bitch and Dracula face. Where that dead face ass, uh, Skip Bayless ass at? Bitch, we want you to stop taking all that Botox trying to look young, motherfucker. Go ahead and look like, because this nigga ain't nothing but skin and bone. This nigga whole face is injection pudding. Yeah, he was a nasty looking bitch. Bitch, you shouldn't talk about nobody. Shut your bitch ass up just because they paying you. Like nigga. Nasty, nigga, ugly than a motherfucked up ass. I, I, I wonder how many surgeries you had to go to the arrogant acting bitch. We need to find out who your pool guy is and see if, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas ain't no real men. Stephen A, ugly ass. I wouldn't watch your boxing video again, Stephen A. Who the fuck let this some bitch even look at a Steve, uh, uh, UFC match? Bitch, I bet not. I'm going to stop. Listen, I love the UFC. If I see Stephen A announce another motherfucking game, um, uh, match, the only fight I'm going to watch again is John Jones. Now I got to watch Chris Shield. But other than that, I ain't going to support you motherfuckers no more. Maybe the style been the two. I'll watch him. See, I'm, damn, I like him too. But other than that, I ain't watching none of you motherfuckers because of that shit. Putting, putting this stuff. Boy, Joe Rogan, I know Joe Rogan wanted to knock him. Boy, boy, Joe Rogan, you can tell him, man. Boy, he was sitting there like, first he was looking at him with a scowl, and then all of a sudden he realized what he was at. He's like, shit, I'm on TV. He looking at Stephen A like, like, bitch, I don't know. Yeah, bitch, what the hell is you? Can't no man respect no nigga like that. Coming in, talking all loud, bitch can't fight, and then got the nerve to put up his punching video. Said this man quit and put up his punching video. Who the fuck will punch Who you playing on fight? Man, he looked like he was fighting Churn. I told you he had that goal up. <laughs> I can't fight your daddy, but I'll knock you out. I can't fight your daddy, but I'll knock you out. I can't fight your daddy, but I'll knock your ass out. I can't beat your daddy, I'll knock you out. That goddamn trainer tricked his ass. <laughs> what kind of, what kind of, what kind of stupid ass? Get your mouth, get your Knocking out all the goddamn little toddlers and shit. You bitch ass nigga. <laughs> that nigga knocked out a whole line of toddlers, boy. What the fuck wrong with you, Stephen A? That nigga, that trainer. I like you, trainer. You a funny motherfucker. <laughs> hey, you set that nigga up good, boy. I know that nigga having a beer with his homeboy. Like, look, look, y'all look, look at this stupid boy. He think I'm training him. And the nigga pay me. <laughs> Oh, Stephen A, did you pay that man to show you that shit? I know you ain't pay that man to show you that bullshit. I'm just going to tell you, this is just my opinion. I'm not trying to stop a man hustle. I think he was just fucking with you, Stephen A. I think you got catfish. Because I don't see none of that shit working in no fight. Unless you fighting six-year-old. And I know some that'll bite your motherfucking ankle. <laughs> and beat your old head. <laughs> Well, boy, look at here. Stephen A, don't talk tough no more, please. This nigga told Joe Rogan, talk about, he looked at the camera, talking about, <coughs> hey, Joe Rogan, if you're looking for me, you know where to find me. And it faded to black like that was tough. And then I went and clicked on a video, because I remember Joe Rogan. He used to be a UFC fighter, I think. I went and kicked on, clicked on a video of Joe Rogan hitting the bag kicking the and bag. kicking the goddamn, I said, hold up, oh, what? Oh, Man, he hitting that bag with them leg kicks. I'm like, hold up now. This little motherfucker, if he hit my leg with that, hold on. My leg was hurting. I was like, what the? So then I thought about it, and I went back to Stephen A. <laughs> and, and then I'm trying to figure out what he meant by, you know where I'm at if you want to find me. If Joe Rogan came to find you in the, that type of way, man, do you know he will kick all your knees off? <laughs> That nigga, one kick, Stephen A, he'll break both of that nigga leg. He'll break the left leg and he'll go through and break the other goddamn leg. You one stupid girlish talking motherfucker. You know that, Stephen A? Them white zaddies been protecting you so long from real life that you don't even understand that you a whole bitch, do you? You think just because you've been talking loud with no repercussions that you a man? Right. I wouldn't even talk shit to Joe Rogan after what the fuck I saw. 
Shit, not without my switchblade. <laughs> Boy, the kicks I saw would knock a mule down. I don't know what the fuck. Stephen A, I don't know what you saw, but the kicks I saw. That boy knocking them down big, tall, or small. I'm telling you, Stephen, that you don't know what the fuck you talking about, boy. That's why I ain't gonna let Maddie get me in no boxing ring. Shit, I ain't no motherfucking boxer. <laughs> Shit. A it's a whole nother game when you talking about boxing. And I never fight a UFC fighter. You stupid as hell, goddamn Stephen A. What you wanted him to come there and talk with you? <laughs> come there and debate? That man don't look like the type that's gonna yell back and forth. He look like the type that's gonna warn you like me and then beat your motherfucking ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just think about it in the media outside of the sports guys, outside of the guys who played the sport. And I might be missing one or two, I'm not sure. So if I miss you, sorry about that. But outside of the sports guys, they really got a bunch of beta male loser type of dudes that just was the nerds in school and now they're there yeah they're now there to pick on and diminish jocks as if we just these dumb uh aggressive crazy motherfuckers when we got that football player that challenged them with the long dreads we played with the seahawks what's his name um richard sherman motherfucker educate he checked all check boxes they hate motherfuckers like that Oh, uh, uh, we we, we got to keep him off TV. Shit, we can't talk about him like that. College grad, better degree than them, busting his ass in shape. Y'all some losers in the media. Most of you motherfuckers are some losers. I hate to say it. Y'all gonna stop talking about athletes like that just because y'all got picked on in high school and college. And like Dr. Boyce, the girl didn't want you, and she married a real man first, and then that real man left her, and then now you get her, and you think that you won a prize, nigga. It ain't nothing new under the sun. You're going to teach that lady. And that's what another lady said. Shout out to that YouTuber that said that. Because you are absolutely right, ma'am. You're not, you not winning, winning no goddamn prize. You a sloppy second, nigga. In my humble opinion. I have a right to my opinion. So don't be teaching people that shit. You hate jocks. You hate us because your whole life we passed you up. And it's a lot of you punks in the media like that. Rob Parker, any nigga that could chew bubble gum and hold a basketball, if it fall on their foot and, and they trip over the ball, a girl will still choose them over your ugly ass. Hey, you better keep standing up there on that little show talking a lot and disrespecting black men. And what's going to happen when your white daddy got to fire your ugly ass because I ain't letting you disrespect black men no more. And then when you go in bars from now on and you go holler at a girl and she say, why ain't your wallet taped to your mouth like mama's cooking told you? We see how y'all like that. We see if it ain't personal then when somebody at the bar when Becky with the good hair, when you go out and you in front of your kids and somebody say, hey, look, they go Becky with the good hair. See how y'all motherfuckers like it. Then we can put the world back in balance where we get some little respect. Because if you don't like something happening to you, then maybe your bitch ass won't do it to other people. And all you immature, emotional ass, punk ass analysts that wasn't shit and fell short, then you should talk with a little more respect. Stephen A, I'm going to go find some clips of your basketball career, and I'm going to post it. Now, I might not post it on my YouTube, but I'm going to post it on my Instagram. And I ain't going to make it no blooper. I'm going to let your real game speak for itself. I'm going to play your best games, and I'm going to play your worst games so they can get the full scope of who you is and not control the narrative like you, you weak punk bitch. Because I think you a weak man. I think that's why you hide in groups and you do them halfway. Why don't you get online for real? The cute dogs should kick your bitch ass out and make you get online for real. Because I might join them too. Get online with your ass just to beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Boyce, you still think I'm crazy? You weak ass weakling. People see you, Doc. They watching way from Hong Kong and they see the shit I'm saying. And they see the shit you saying, and something ain't adding up with you, Doc. Yeah, you keeping that black power fake stuff strong by dealing with Asians. But Asians don't like you. And that's probably why you didn't speak up for them Asian people 
that was talking about Charleston White again. I'm waiting to see that video. Like I said, it's been two, three weeks now. It's been about two, three weeks now, uh, boys. And I know you want to help out with YouTube because they know they own algorithms, but they need you to tell them. See, you a double talking dummy. I told you about that. You a dummy. He a double talking, click watching, a uh, clip watching ho. The man will get up there and say, I don't know you, compare you to a cult leader that's a psycho, then say, I didn't do nothing bad about you. Come right back and say one thing nice and say, let me tell you what I do like about him. Then go on a diatribe of stuff that's bad. And then say, but he cool. And then say, but everybody that listened to him, that's what's wrong with America. But he ain't say one thing bad. Who, who listens to a guy who talk like that? And so what, what people that want to be a part of his circle, because he's connected to certain people, they think in their head, well, damn, this is how the elite talk. And one minute, Dr. Boy said, oh, he, he fucking making assumptions about me calling me elitist. And then in the next breath, he said, oh, I only want 10 percent. So if that's a fucking elitist, then God dang it, call me an elitist. It's like, Dr. Boyce, you stupid for real. I know somebody gave you a doctor degree, and I think that's just because you was a black fat dude that talked a lot, and they felt bad for you because you look like you sexually deprived. You probably finally got a hold of that woman. You probably didn't get a hold of her yet because you were texting about me. You were tweeting about me on your damn honeymoon. What no sparks in that goddamn room. <laughs> oh, after all that 20 years, it was like Sherman comes. Sherman, Sherman, Sherman. <laughs> All that goddamn pressure just build up. Your ass got your little weasel ass up there for 30 seconds and start texting about another man. Goddamn shit. All that anticipation made you pop, didn't it? Oh, bitch ass nigga. Shut up, nigga. <laughs> hey. Fuck out of here. Nigga do all that talking. I got a shirt on my goddamn uh, Teespring that say, why waste time telling me what you can show me? Why waste time telling everybody you happy, doc? If you happy, be happy. Why waste time telling the whole world to date a single mama just because yours working out? <laughs> Enjoy it. Y'all just got married. What if it divorced in two years? And then you're going to be back up there talking about, oh, shit, let me tell you the pitfalls of leaving the single mama or being with a single mama because you a double talking bitch. Things are about what other what people like. They get to decide what they want for their own life, Dr. Boys. Just because somebody put a doctor in front of your name don't mean you get to giving out advice about everything that you do, you weasel. The one thing you won't do is stand alone because you're a punk. <laughs> <coughs> Fuck you talking about. How the hell are you gonna disrespect somebody and then say, just come on my platform, talk to me? Fuck no, nigga. Hell yeah, you talk about y'all nigga crazy. Y'all do that work on somebody. They must don't know. I done been through down there every situation you could be in. A motherfucker. Remember how I told you about a story about how a motherfucker will go to the club, they'll see you in the club doing your thing. And if they want to get in next to you, how they get in next to you is they'll have one of their little guys. A lot of this happening to y'all rappers. Pay attention. Um and it's definitely happening to y'all ball players because they know y'all. They, they think y'all some punks. Half of y'all want to be down, want to be thugs at the same time while you're making millions. Newsflash, they're not going to let you do that. They're going to use you. You might as well get security like I do sometime when I go to the club. Now I'm retired. The NBA got policies against protecting yourself. Now I'm retired. And you can still go out with a cop. You guys are putting yourself at risk for no fucking reason. And all of these niggas are doing is taking advantage of you. So what happens is if a nigga want to get, if a street dude want to get close to you, he send one of his niggas at you, start a problem with you. They go over there. Y'all might get in a fight. They might let their mans get beat up or they might break it up before it get to that point. And they'll go tell them, nigga, oh man, that's a real OG such and such. Man, you hit a real one, isn't that? But I got you. When you go out from here on out, I'll make sure you good. Now you done let the fox in the hen house, baby. That's how it now this real nigga, you done let a real nigga around all these women you got access to. 
He find out who your baby mama is. He going to tell her everything about you because he really want to destroy that. He want to hit that first because he want to be you. He go tell her every woman you got on the side to get her in her emotions. Then he sleep with all the women on the side because he tell them, y'all just a number. He got all these girls. So then they get emotional. And I don't know what it is about when females get emotional. They just do whatever. Oh, baby, baby, man. <laughs> a lot of you are like that. Instead of you telling that nigga, you really not his friend, huh? You in here telling every goddamn thing that don't make you look better than me. You a weasel. Get the fuck out. Or go telling the man that he snitching on like that. He probably be real, but he's snitching. And that's what you young boys have going on. As long as you, if you notice the guy that you let around like around you like that, that'd be the main one that's beefing with you at the end of the day. Soon as you stop giving them something, that's your arch enemy. Soon as you move on and grow up and get married, that's your arch enemy. He tell all your secrets. You niggas better start learning to stand alone. You don't need 15 niggas at your table. If a nigga is your friend, he should be off working half the goddamn day. Or y'all should be, if you, you got all this money, y'all should be coming up with a plan. He shouldn't be up under you all day trying to fuck all these girls or sleep with all these girls. Sorry. That was for educational purpose. <laughs> Censor warning advisory. <laughs> but he shouldn't be up under you all the time trying to sleep with these girls. If he's serious about his business, he'll understand he's a man. And y'all hang out sometime. Not all the motherfucking time. See, a lot of y'all letting the fox in the hen house. Ask me how I know. <laughs> sometimes I was the fox. <laughs> sometimes I let the fox in the hen house. That's called life. I got a, I got a doctorate too. Doc. Just my doctorate better than yours. You stupid. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. he say things out of his mouth that he think that all he got to do is, is filibuster for a while. And because he a doctor and then attach himself to other men, then people got to listen to him. My words are not validated through other men, Doc. My words, they listening to everything I say. You don't put such a spotlight on me that they coming to listen. And they come in the lab, Doc. I know that little dry-ass podcast you got where you just breaking down numbers all day. Man, turn that shit off every two seconds. You got them take you 20 minutes to get to the goddamn point. And you still don't say nothing when you get to the goddamn point. Stupid song, bitch. But look here. It's a beautiful day outside. I think that's long enough on YouTube. I think uh, that was a little mama's cooking. I think guys going to be able to enjoy this video. Break it down. Buy your kids some Pampers or whatever they need. Life insurance, $15 a month. Life insurance. Get you some life insurance. Health insurance. Cigna Dental is $15 a fucking month. Get your teeth right. I hear y'all liking my teeth. Thank you. $15 a month. <laughs> Take care of yourself. We spend more time making the outside look good, but then inside up here fucked up, inside here fucked up, inside here fucked up. But you got on pretty shoes, though. Unless you rob Parker, the outside fucked up, the inside fucked up. <laughs> he just fucked up. Hey, 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 Chris grew the blue shot. Bruce Shaw, that's an ugly ass name anyway. That fit this nigga. Nigga, you need hey, listen, you need to be the first nigga we allow to have blackface. <laughs> that, that nigga, I can't tell. Nigga, you fucked up, boy. You ooh. You bet not ever lose that job on television, nigga. Mm-mm. I tell you, you ain't got no personality and your breath looks stank. <laughs> Hey, listen, I'm going to go out here to enjoy this day. <laughs> I waiting on my son to come back. My son got a job, y'all. Yeah, he got a job. He want to talk all that shit. Want to goddamn, he think he old now, you know. He's starting to, like, try to say shit back, scrimp with me a little bit, questioning him, you know. Well, shouldn't I do it like that? Looking at that nigga, hold on, boy. You think you tell him now, huh? Okay. Get your ass out here and get a job and see how it is. Then. So he got one, though. So now he's at Walmart getting his little, you know, work attire. 
so he can go listen to somebody else since he don't want to hear my independent shit. Then he'll be back. <laughs> Once he learn, he'll be back. How hard it is to make a dollar, he'll be back. So he go, yeah, you're right. He gonna he gotta learn. He damn sure do. He gotta see what life is like. I want him to interact with with, with, with girls and be able to communicate and talk. You know, it's been rough on him during this damn pandemic. You know, yeah, his hardest part is listening and following the rest. He wanna I always want to add something to it. You know, I got my boy when he was 13 years old. Educate a little book. I'm gonna talk you talk you into a circle like Dr. Boyce. But then when you asked him to do something, he couldn't do a goddamn thing. Gave him a shovel. He looking at me. He wanted to throw the motherfucker like a shot put. <laughs> you know, I'm putting him in real life situations. His mama tell me how smart he is. And, and I kept telling him, I don't want to hear all that shit. So I gave him the car. Go pump some gas. He out there just standing there. Don't know what the fuck he's doing. I'm like, Hold on. Wait a minute. So you 13 years old. And I'm, everything that a man supposed to know how to do for his woman, you don't know how to do none of this shit. And your mama proud that you can read a book and that's it. So she's going to put this product outside of her home at 18 years old that don't know how to pump gas, don't know how to use a shovel, don't know how to cut grass, don't know how to do anything that real women is going to expect a man to know how to do. And then she would have the nerve to say men ain't real men. I wonder why. Darn in that. 13 years old, he's standing damn near. He was 13, six foot tall. It looked like a grown man, six foot, six one. Now he's six, six. Looks like a grown man and he still got a lot to learn. So ladies, let these kids go with their daddies. You might not like us. You liked us at one time. You liked us, you liked me a couple of times. Oh. <laughs> But you gotta let that go. Cause that little boy needs that little boy needs his mom, his mother. He needs that intuition. He needs to know that you don't have to fight in every situation. Now, some of you ladies, goddamn. Y'all motherfucker rolling around on the goddamn ground in Walmart in front of your goddamn kids. I just, God damn. That kid just taking mental notes. Beep, beep. This is how you deal with that. You fucking with me. I'm gonna do what my mama did. Beep, beep, beep. Cause it's learned behavior. You know that, right? Everything these kids come as a blank canvas. It's learned behavior. What are you teaching them? If you always angry, what you think your kid going to be? If you always depressed, what you think your kid going to be? If you always chasing behind the club, what you think your kid going to do? So before you talk about a celebrity being a role model, you should try it first. It's hard as a motherfucker being a parent. And I ain't saying I'm perfect. Shit, I get on my son's ass. That's why you need a woman so that you can calm a man down sometimes. Sometimes we just want to put foot in some. Sometimes we go too far. Hold on, calm down. Hold on now. You, he, he got the point. He got the point. <laughs> he got the point. But shit. But some of you ladies now, goddamn, y'all giving the point too much. Shit. Some of you ladies, the only time you communicate with these young boys, I'm mentoring a young boy now. He's so frustrated. All his mama do is yell at him about everything he do. Oh, uh, y'all whoop the shit out of him. And I keep telling her, I said, that's not going to help this boy. He got to learn. I ain't hit that in around. I got to teach him like a man. Well, I'm a man. And I'm telling you, that's not going to work. You are making an angrier, stronger beast. Because after you don't break him, he going to be able to break some shit. <laughs> so you better leave that goddamn boy alone like that. And that's why some of these little boys don't know how to handle certain situations because they haven't been taught how to handle these situations at home. If it's going straight to violence at home, it's going to go straight to violence in the street. Yeah. Lead straight with emotion. Uh, listen. Yeah. Yeah, hey, how you let a motherfucker try you like that, Kwame? You let somebody try you for 20 years. Nigga, do you know what's gonna happen when you go to jail, boy, talking all that, they trying you talk? That guard gonna say, what that guard gonna tell him? You know more than me, what that guard gonna tell him? He said, B word, get butt naked. And then what? 
script. You're going to turn into a scribble. In front of a line of other niggas, you're going to turn uh, uh, inwards. You got he got a bend down, squat down, cough. Yeah, young punks right out of high school gonna try you. Turn around, open your bunky, lift it up, show me everything, stripper. You gonna go from a man to an animal, and you won't think that's trying you. So instead of you being able to walk away and make an informed decision, you say they ain't gonna try you, so you do something stupid. And then you get tried for your whole sentence. Because every dorm you move into, they do the same thing, don't they? No, not every dorm. That's when you first walk through the When you first walk in, you're naked. So if they want to come in your cell and search it, they got to ask you a question. So they can wake you up anytime. They can strip, they can tell me to take my clothes off anytime they want to. And niggas signing up for that, calling that real. So wait a minute. So I'm, I'm just walking around minding my business. They can say, hey, boy, take off all your clothes. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna keep coming at you like that. And I got to do what they say. Oh, you're going to have to knock me out take my clothes off. I'm gonna fuck that shit. <laughs> Man, that's now crazy. And y'all signing up for that talking about you ain't going to let nobody try you. You signing up to be a stripper and you ain't even going to get paid for it. You niggas, go, you niggas signing up for a lifestyle to be free strippers. Cause y'all listening to rap music that make that shit sound tough. And then when you get 15, 20 years, you a stripper for 15, 20 motherfucking years. Then when you come out, that's when you want to act like you learned something. They give them how much? So mother, I'll burn, I'll throw that 25. What the fuck I'm gonna do with this? So wait a minute, you go be a slave for 15, 10, 15 years. And they cut you a check for twenty five dollars and say, "Huh, you rehabilitated? Go on back out here and learn life." That's how they do it. Twenty five dollars, get the hell off, and a bus ticket. No wonder society directing y'all women to sleep with these type of men. And a bus ticket. It's easy to control these men, ain't it? And then they know they're not gonna breed children. That's love, children. It's all dysfunction. This shit don't make no sense. I told you we're in assimilation. Y'all just ain't see it yet. We in a simulation that we let weasels like Stephen A, weasels like Dr. Boyce, all because we like him. We like Dr. Claude. That's why he keeps saying his name. So then we got to like Doc. We got to like Dr. Boyce, too. And all they got to do since the world went smart. All we got to do is give a motherfucker a fake degree and he can control the minds of all the niggas. You compared me to a white man that can control women through church and religion. And our community is getting controlled by church and religion. Doc, I wonder if you that slow or was you really trying to get me to talk about the church, Doc? Because for a doctor, you seem either pretty slow or you really slick with words as a condescending little bitch. And I think you ain't that smart. I just think you a condescending little bitch, in my humblest opinion. I don't mean to be rude, but fuck you. <laughs> That's how them condescending motherfuckers talk. I don't mean to be rude. I really like you, but you can kiss my motherfucking ass. <laughs> y'all motherfucking crazy. Whoever taught y'all this whitewashed white boy way of talking to grown men, you need to unlearn it. Y'all need to unlearn that weak ass way of talking to grown ass men. You're not going to disrespect me. Talk condescending like that. And then ask me to get on your goddamn TV show or come on your podcast. I'm not coming on podcasts that ask a man one time, two times, three times about another man that, that hadn't been to your podcast. And this man admitted that he don't know. So the conversation should be over. That's not a, he can't say anything educated on the subject after he said he didn't know me. That's ignorance. And we got a lot of that going on in our community. We bring out people that everybody like and have him speaking on topics even after this dumb son bitch is on camera saying he don't know me. But I'm a demigod. But I'm like Jim Jones. But I'm crazy. But I'm mad about basketball. But notice he can't, he blind when Devin George on there. He blind when my moot on there. He blind about the trade school. He blind about everything else. He just want to talk about me arguing with the niggas that he like. 
because I'm the bad guy. I'm crazy. And we should let this lesser charge bitch that helped so many black people stay on air. He helped so many people. I don't heard Corey Holcomb and all these men. This one weasel done help. Where you getting all this goddamn money, Charlemagne? Just a couple years ago, you was goddamn by your own admission putting Spanish fly in Remy bottles or some type of alcohol by your own admission, allegedly. I think you on camera saying it, but it couldn't have been, it might not have been you the way your face change up colors and shit. You light as hell now, so it might have been a different motherfucker. So I'm gonna say allegedly. But allegedly, I thought a patch eyed motherfucker said he was putting Spanish fly in a drink or two. Allegedly, I thought that was you. Maybe you bleached your skin so you're a new person. And just a couple of years ago, you were doing that. And you ain't have all this goddamn money. After this case, you just a money man. You could, you got so much money, you could just give out deals and money to people. You own every podcast, allegedly, helping with everybody in production. You just so smart all of a sudden. I wonder if you just create and go along, get along gangs. Because you the biggest go along, get along gang puppet there is. You brought every masculine man on your show and disrespected him. You talk to baby like he ain't accomplished nothing. You talk to an independent man like Dame Dash like you know more than him while on sitting on a fucking job for 20 fucking years. Then you bring certain women up there and you disrespect the fuck out of them. You're a sexual deviant bastard. So you're smelling seats. You always been ugly and short. And we know most women like tall guys. So you ain't probably ain't start getting no women until you start writing books and being on this show. You little five, what are you, five, six? You little patch, you were five, six with a patch over your eye? Yeah. You're sick, boy. And boys, you sick. And all you motherfuckers that's hanging with that nigga sick. And that's why all y'all so fucking spooked. Because I know a lot of you motherfuckers. Men and women. But like I said, guys, I ain't going to say anything. Yeah. I know what some of you motherfuckers are do to protect your secrets. So I'll be quiet about y'all. This about the white people that pay for this system. And they know it. This about the white folks that pay these little puppets to create these little go-along, get-along games. We want to know where you got your money from, Charlemagne. We want to know all these white people that you think is mad at me, Dr. Boyce. That's not over me, Doc. Who are these white people that's upset? Why do they feel they need to control me? And do they feel like they need to control all black males? Because we all want to know this question. We want that answer, Doc. You said you've been selling your own people out to enrich yourself. You haven't even talked about that woman that stepped down from Black Lives Matter. What's her name? Patrice Culliner or something like that. Yeah, she didn't want to gate up at the border, but I just saw a pretty tall, high ass gate around her goddamn mansion. I wonder who that is to keep out. I wonder what that big pretty gate she just got up for lying and, t and hollering about Black Lives Matter in the street. I guess Black Lives don't matter no more once you get around white folks. But I ain't hear you say nothing about that, Doc. And all of you people that was shouting and hollering Black Lives Matter as if we didn't know that shit. But see, we can't tell by the actions because that slogan. See, we some slogan motherfuckers now. We are slogan you to death. Black Lives Matter while we shooting at motherfuckers every other second that's black from black every day. Make it make sense. And I don't know who came up with that saying first and nor do I give a fuck. I just like it. So I'm not going to do all that. Okay. But we let all these people come in and try to be our leaders and tell us what the fuck to do as if we can't lead our own lives. I'm not trying to be anybody's leader. Remember, I'm just an old busted bus. I told you in the Bible, it say we all are nothing. This should show these children that, dang, I didn't even know this man can talk. I thought he wasn't shit. If this man would have stayed quiet, I would have went to my grave thinking he wasn't shit. 
So this should show a little kid inspiration that it don't matter what a motherfucker think. You be a king of oneself. You have that inner strength within that you keep persevering and going despite of. And that's what them white folks don't want you to see. And when I say them white folks, it's some of them liberal white folks that, oh, they're not smart. We need to help them. No, we don't need your motherfucking help. Listening to y'all and not listening to our elders, true elders and not you, Dr. Boyce. Elders didn't, the elders I know didn't have 97 degrees. The elders I knew knew about everything and never went to college. They can show you how to fix something just by breaking it down and putting it together. The elders wasn't educated by white folks, Doc. So do I think you are an elder, Doc? You never asked me, so I'm going to tell you no. I don't think you're an elder. I think you're going to tell us that Western education that you got from folks that ain't teaching us nothing that we need. That's why you haven't taught anybody anything that they need. Not that I know of on a large scale. The only thing that people need is that they can do it. If a motherfucker out of a homeless shelter became the number one draft pick, Doc, think about that, Doc. Think about if they would have gave me the mic 20 years ago, Doc. Just think about it. How many lives would have been saved, Doc? Just think about it. Think about how many people that don't have to beef on YouTube right now because all they could do is just play one of my videos, Doc. Doc, this is a movement, Doc. And thanks for showing me that you want to go along. Get along, gang, Doc. And it's okay. It's cool. You only want 10% anyway. So it's a highway over here for the 90%. So let us do us, okay? Don't call us stupid. We didn't call nobody over your channel stupid. Don't disrespect us. Nobody's disrespecting you. I wasn't speaking about you, sir. And I don't want no white daddy over me like you had an Asian daddy over you. Okay, Doc? So you have a blessed one, Doc. I, I wish you would talk about more important topics. If you're going to dig into something and try to uh, put your whole uh, YouTube career on the line over it, why don't you do that over somebody who stepped down and had a whole uh, uh, race of people burning shit down in the streets and burning down buildings that could have gave them a job in the name of Black Lives Matter. And now that she took her cut, she don't give a fuck about black lives. Now, why she ain't take some of them millions of dollars and build no youth centers? At least if you screaming, screaming Black Lives Matter and you got a Cadillac deal, there should be a youth center up by now. Maybe before you bought your second house. Maybe before you bought your third one, allegedly. Or maybe before you bought your island, allegedly. See, you don't question the people that you should question. You question the nigga that tell them they can do it on their own. I wonder why that is, Doc. It's a lot of money and you keeping people thinking they need leaders, don't it, Doc? I wonder who all else your friend. I wonder if Al Sharpton your friend. I wonder if that black lawyer that come around and every time a black boy die, I wonder if he your friend. But that same black lawyer didn't offer up his services for free when that Asian man just shot that black boy and he lived. I ain't seen him go down there yet. I guess if he would have died, he'd have went. You motherfuckers are some pimps. You're poverty pimps. You want people, you need people broken, uneducated. That's why you do the schools the way that you do. But see, we're going to demand you put trades back in the schools because when you have people with money in their pockets, and they taking care of their families, you really can't you really can't get them to do stupid shit. But when you got them waiting on a stimulus check, you can kind of program their mind to do anything you want them to do. That day is over. Good day.